Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? I've featured several retro sub notebooks in the past, but this one is definitely the smallest so far. Included in a batch of other laptops I picked up was this little one, a Hitachi Vision Book Traveler. Specifically, it's model 3745, and it dates back to late 1997. Despite its rather small 8.4-inch screen, the machine is surprisingly full-featured. On the right side are full-size PS2, serial, and VGA ports, along with an infrared transceiver, and clever little pop-out Kensington locking tab. The back is sparse, with just the DC input jack and parallel port. My machine is missing the flip-down door, but I think that was a common occurrence with this model, as we'll see again a bit later. The left side is perhaps the most interesting. The Traveler was keen on expandability, so it included three PC card slots. There's a pair in typical stacked configuration, which could also support a single Type 3 card, like this nifty Zircom 10100 Ethernet adapter. But behind them was a single card bus enabled slot for more advanced devices, like USB adapters. And in fact, that was the only way to add USB to this machine, as the front only holds the audio jacks and the socket for the external floppy drive, which, sadly, I'm missing. What's also curious is that unlike some other sub-notebooks from its era, there's no docking station support. In the middle of the machine's bottom panel is a removable cover, but that's just to access the clock battery and memory. And as for RAM, the Traveler came with 8 megabytes on board, with a 16 megabyte module in the single expansion slot. The maximum it could take was 40 megabytes, which this machine has, as someone swapped that original module with a 32 megabyte one at some point. Most laptops past and present use proprietary battery packs, but the Traveler was different. In each rear corner is a fold-down door that holds a standard lithium-ion camcorder battery. These packs were incredibly common back then, and are even still used now, so to be able to pick up several spares inexpensively would have been very convenient. Which is just as well, as I wasn't able to find any battery life figures for this machine, which means it probably wasn't all that great. The rest of the system specifications were pretty typical for a laptop from 1997. It has a 133 MHz Pentium MMX processor and a 1 GB hard drive, and shipped with Windows 95. The LCD panel is Active Matrix and features a resolution of 640x480, and actually looks quite nice. It only has 1 MB of video memory, and its graphics controller wasn't meant for 3D gaming, though it did claim to have Sound Blaster compatible audio through its Crystal Audio chipset but I'll leave it up to you to judge if it's any good. So clearly, the Vision Book Traveler was targeted at business users, for whom multimedia wasn't as important as portability. And it excels at that, coming in at about 2.7 pounds, or just a bit over a kilogram. 
while typing for extended periods on its smaller-than-normal keyboard would likely get annoying quickly. Despite Hitachi's claims of it being touch-typable, I suspect the primary buyer of these were road warrior salespeople who primarily just worked up proposals and delivered presentations. To them, the fact this machine weighed at least half as much as a typical laptop was probably worth all the other trade-offs. Of course, price was one of those factors. Subnotebooks always cost more due to the complexities of their miniaturization, and the Traveler originally sold for $2,400 US, almost $1,000 higher than a similarly specced mainstream model, and that one came with a larger screen and CD-ROM drive. Accordingly, sales were slow, and prices quickly fell, dropping to $1,800 by April 1998. The American market for sub-notebooks just wasn't that hot. The same wasn't the case in Japan, though, which is where this machine was made. In fact, Hitachi didn't even manufacture it. If its boxy nature and use of track point in the keyboard don't give away its origins, this will. Yep, it's a rebadged ThinkPad. Well, okay, kinda. The VisionBook Traveler was made by a company called Rios, which was a joint venture between Ricoh and IBM Japan. The first generation of laptops they made, which included the Traveler, had the internal codename Chandra and was sold under a few other brands, one of which was the subject of some drama. The Persona T150 was one such rebadged machine, and its parent company, Nemantix, even started accepting pre-orders after getting favorable press coverage. But the company abruptly shut down in December 1997 when it was found that its owner had been cheating customers and suppliers alike. In July of 1998, the line was revised to offer significantly higher specifications, and was referred to as Clavius. This included the ThinkPad 235, which, like most of the others, was only sold in Japan. The 235 is a better machine in almost every way. It keeps the same form factor and design, but the LCD panel grew to 9.2 inches and offered 800 by 600 resolution. 32 megabytes of RAM came built in, and this unit had been upgraded to include another 32 megabyte module, though the machine could be maxed out at 96 megs. It originally shipped with a 3.2 gigabyte IDE hard drive, but at some point a previous owner had swapped in a 16 gigabyte unit instead. But perhaps most importantly, the CPU was bumped up to a 266 MHz Pentium MMX, though 166 and 233 versions were available too. And even though the video memory was increased to 2 MB, a gaming powerhouse this machine still wasn't. But at least for the money, it finally packed some punch. Something curious about both machines is the BIOS. Like many computers, you can enter its configuration menu during boot by pressing F1. But on these, you can also go back into it at any time, even with the OS running, by pressing function F1. Any changes you make take effect the next time the computer is started up. There's also a few hidden options you can get to by pressing control A, then escape a couple of times. They're not terribly useful to most people, but could be handy if you wanted to play around with alternative OS's. Most of the ports on the ThinkPad are the same as the Traveler, with the exception of the front panel. The audio jacks are still there, but in place of the external floppy drive connector, the 235 has a single USB 1.0 port. I think this is a welcome trade-off. The computer shipped with Windows 98, which offered much better USB support anyway. The floppy drive hooked up to the parallel port instead, and just like on the Traveler, the door on the back of this machine is long gone. When I bought it off of Yahoo Auctions Japan, the seller had wiped the hard drive and reinstalled the OS, how it had come from the factory, supplemental software and all. They had also thoughtfully included copies of all the installers, 
along with the original Windows 98 license. This machine has clearly been well cared for, which is much appreciated given their relative scarcity nowadays. While there have certainly been smaller laptops since these debuted, they haven't always been practical. Yeah, the keyboard and screen on the Traveler, ThinkPad 235, and their counterparts are definitely on the smaller side, but they remained usable. These machines were built for productivity and not just bragging rights. And while their price to performance ratio only made sense to people for whom portability was key, they did manage to prove an old adage that good things can indeed come in small packages. If you like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.